What am I doing here? I'm breathing, of course. Remember, no yoga is complete unless we learn to monitor our breath. Breathing is prana. In, yoga, in Sanskrit, prana means breath or life, life force. And pranayama or yama, pranayama, is control of breath or breath control. So over the next few segments, we are going to learn how to breathe right. Now, you, I'm sure you're going to say, I know how to breathe. I've been doing it for whatever number of years since I've been born. But trust me, I didn't know. I'm 61, and I didn't know how to breathe correctly till I learned how to do that. So it's just because we're born on land or water or air or wherever we are, just because we're born alive doesn't mean we know how to breathe. We are breathing. We're not doing it consciously. So when you do conscious breathing, you're optimizing your body capabilities. Where the mind goes, energy flows. Akram and I are going to show you here how to breathe in a way that makes you feel totally energized but not tired. Now there are 12 different techniques plus two extra bonus. 12 techniques that I'm going to share with you for per segment in this episode. Each segment is about 10 minutes. So let's get started. The first one that I like very much is called Nadi Shuddhi. Nadi is nerve. Shuddhi is cleaning or cleansing. I would highly recommend if you can sit in any comfortable position, you can sit the way I'm sitting, you can sit the way Akram is sitting. Both Akram and I have our knees forward. Now, if you're sitting cross-legged, and I'm going to show you, but I'm not going to do my breathing in the cross-legged position. If you're on the mat or the floor and you're sitting cross-legged, you want to connect your thumb and index. Now, that actually, think of it, don't think of it as a religious symbol. That actually completes the electric circuit in your body. So you're actually taking all the air, all the oxygen in from the air into your body, energizing and letting out the carbon dioxide. So that helps you keep keep that connection. So we're going to keep the same position, thumb and index connected, but Akram has got his knees out and I'm going to have my knees out as well. And I may change positions halfway. Sometimes the knees hurt and that's okay to change. But you're going to keep your palms facing down. If I'm cross-legged, my palms would be up. So you're going to keep the palms facing down. Now, Nadi Shuddhi is nerve cleansing. So we're going to start with the right hand. Even if you're left-handed, use your right hand. Make a telephone. So bring your first two fingers in. And I think a few segments ago, a few episodes ago, we actually did give you a quick demo of this. Use your thumb and your ring finger. You're going to place your thumb over the base of the right nostril. Inhale through the left. Place your ring finger over the left nostril and then release the ring finger. Exhale through the left. Now, if you have any asthma or breathing issues, do not do the hold. Just go straight, inhale, exhale. Don't do the hold. Now, place your ring finger over the left nostril. Inhale through the right. Hold. Release the thumb. Exhale through the right. We're just going to do some demos for you, but at home you can practice this about three rounds per breath. So this breathing technique, we've shown you one round. We're going to do another one called alternate nostril. I believe we also touched on that a few episodes ago, some segments away. Same thing. Bring the first two fingers in. Ring and thumb. Ring finger and thumb are what we're going to use. Place the thumb at the base of the right nostril. And this time I'm going to bring your attention to your elbows. Take your right elbow back. So that opens up your lungs, gives you more space to inhale more air. Inhale through the left. Hold with the ring finger. Release through the right. Now remember, inhale doesn't, it, it happens when you're in the postures, but here we're doing conscious inhale. Inhale through the right. Hold with the thumb. Release the ring finger.
that's anulom vilom, alternate nostril breathing. So you're breathing through both nostrils. When you inhale through the left nostril, you energize the right side of the brain, your logical side. You inhale through the right nostril, energize the left side of the brain, that's your artistic side. So you want to stay balanced in life. Now, there are two more breathing techniques. They're called Surya Bhedan and Chandra Bhedan. Surya, the right side of the body, right nostril, right arm, everything on the right side is considered the male dominant side. It's considered the energizing side, the left or the sun side. Left side is called the moon side or the female energy, the female dominant form. And it's a gentler kind of, uh, it's considered a gentler side. I've known females who are pretty strong. I've known men who are very gentle. But this is just a general concept. So Akram and I are going to show you how you do the Surya Bhedan. First, I'm going to demonstrate. Wait, same thing. You keep your little telephone handy. Bring the first two fingers in. Thumb at the base of the left no uh, base of the right nostril, Surya Bhedan. Uh, this is Chandra Bhedan, actually, the moon nostril. Inhale through the left. Hold. And release the ring finger. That looks very similar to the nerve cleansing, but in this one, you keep breathing through the left nostril, the moon nostril. Keep breathing. Inhale. Hold. Release. Now you could do that about five, ten rounds, as long as it feels comfortable. That's the moon nostril, Chandra Bhedan. Now we're going to do the Surya Bhedan the sun nostril, hold the ring finger over the left nostril, inhale through the right. Hold with the thumb and release the thumb, exhale. Keep breathing through the right. Hold. Exhale. That's called Surya Bhedan. Surya Bhedan, again, just to remind you, is the sun nostril cleansing of the right side of the body. <coughs> we did the Chandra Bhedan, the moon nostril as well, but because we have the luxury of one more minute in this particular segment of this episode, we are going to practice one more breathing technique called the ujjayi which in the last couple of episodes akram did that really well the breathing ujjayi is also translated as victorious vijay or ujjayi is victorious in sanskrit and i'm going to just actually you know what i won't shift my position just yet let the oxygen move up and it's inhale and exhale through the back of the throat so you're going to inhale like a loud whisper let's do it together akram when you're ready inhale Bring your chin down and lock it in and hold. Chin up and release. We're going to do that one more time. Inhale. Lock in and hold. Release. Now remember, the reason I sit up like this, we all have different anatomical proportions. My torso is shorter proportionately than my legs. So I need to raise my torso because all our glands and organs are between the hip and mostly between the hip and the shoulders and a few of them in the head region, pineal and pituitary. So I want to make sure all that oxygen goes up. Now for the next segment, we can take a few seconds off, but while we are doing that, I can also just share with you when I say where the mind goes, energy flows, what we are doing is we are taking our mind to that part of the body that needs oxygen the most. So if you find one particular day that your back is hurting a lot, you will actually attempt a breathing technique called Sheetkari, which is actually cooling of the spine, but really you're taking air in through the tongue. You visualize all that oxygen going down your spine. Let's try it together. Now I'm sitting cross-legged this time. I'm going to keep my palms facing up for this. You don't need your hands. You can just use your face, your tongue, and keep your eyes open. If it bothers you for privacy, you can keep your eyes closed. I'm going to close my eyes for a moment. Curl your tongue and bring it out like you're holding a cigar or a cigarette in your mouth. 
And because I can't talk as I do that, I'm going to instruct you before you do it. You're going to inhale air through that cigarette and visualize it going down all down your spine. And because you need to visualize, you may want to close your eyes. Pull your tongue in, hold, visualize, and release. Softly through the mouth. Let's try that one more time. Pull in and hold. Release. Shikari. Another breathing technique that actually helps to bring saliva in your mouth, and it's especially good for people who feel sometimes the mouth gets really dry, especially if you're diabetic, you're in very hot climate outside, you're standing in what the deserts of Nevada, wherever you are, and you don't have any water in sight. All right, unless you're going to see an oasis. Here's another way to create saliva in your mouth. The tip of the tongue on the ridge of the upper teeth. This one's called shitali. Shitali literally means cooling and it's cooling of the tongue. So you're making, a, this time you're making a cigar going sideways, a tube that goes sideways. And again, because I cannot speak as I do it, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep my mouth open, keep the tongue curled in, and inhale from the sides, and you'll feel your mouth moistening. Very nice. Beautiful. You can actually hear the saliva, the bubbles forming in the mouth. Pull in and hold. Release softly through the mouth. One more time. At home, if you're feeling particularly dry, you can keep going with that, and that's perfectly all right. <coughs> the next two breathing techniques are very good for lowering your blood pressure. Brahmari, Brahmari means bumblebee, and Shanmukhi is actually a conch. So it's your, actually we're going to combine the next two breathing techniques. It's just so much more effective. I'm going to take off my fancy glasses. For this one, you're going to place your index finger just below the eyebrows. Going to place your uh, middle finger at the base of the nostrils, ring finger on the upper lip, little finger below the lower lip, and your thumb goes over the ear. Now this part is actually, this part of the breathing technique, this gesture is called Shanmukhi. Shanmukhi is conch or shell. Your hands are almost like a, one of those shells that opens out like a fan. And as you inhale, you press your thumb in and you exhale, you make the sound of a bumblebee. I'll show you in just a moment. Let's try that. Actually, watch me. Inhale. Press in and hold. Your thumb is over the ear and release with a sound let's try that all together inhale press in gently and hold and release with a sound It's that much more effective if you articulate the sound from the base of the throat because you're actually helping calm your brain and it's similar to the mm in the om sound which we'll do at the end of the next so segment. So where's the sound coming from? Mm. Mm. The back of the throat. And it's coming out of the mouth? Yes, the sound is coming from the back of the throat mm -hmm. but you're still breathing, uh, exhaling softly through the mouth and the nose. Okay. But what we're doing, and a very good question, actually, I'm glad Akram asked that, because what we're doing is we're taking all the air in. We don't really have yoga for the face. So this is one way to energize all the facial muscles. You take all the air in, you press and lock it in, and when you release, it calms your brain. The mm sound calms the brain. So try that at home. Whenever you're feeling agitated, don't worry about anyone who's watching you. It's, it's for yourself. You're not doing it for others, right? We need to take care of ourselves. So we're going to try, in the next segment, we're going to give ourselves a few seconds while I just talk you into the next segment. It's going to be a little bit intense, 
And for this, I'm going to change positions again because I will need to breathe rapidly. Akram, you're fine where you are. And folks at home, don't feel intimidated just because you're not able to keep pace because it took me a while and wherever I am today, you know, there's an expression, I don't know if I made it up or I heard it somewhere. Whenever I wake up, that's my dawn. So it doesn't matter, just because the sun is up, it's not dawn. Your dawn happens when you wake up. So spiritually, physically, mentally, when we wake up, that's our dawn. So whenever my breathing feels just right, whatever it feels today is right for me. So I'm gonna try a method called bhastrika. Bhastrika literally means bellows. And I'm on my knees, so I'm gonna keep my palms down, thumb and index touching, just to close that connection. Just thinking about it makes me, agitates me. So I've got to calm myself down. Take a deep inhale and exhale. For Bhastrika, we're going to inhale all the way from the belly into the chest. Fill up your lungs. You're going to then start pumping. Basically, you're going to do a forceful inhale and exhale. And I'll show you just a few seconds first. You're actually pumping the air like a pair of bellows. So you, you actually are moving the abdominal region quite forcefully. You're also exhaling quite forcefully. And this is great for preventing constipation. You're getting beautiful uh, bowel movement, right? You will get beautiful bowel movement right after this breathing technique. So you've got a couple of minutes. We're going to practice that. And then I'm going to take you through a little bit of a surprise uh, element. And I'm going to keep it a surprise. I won't give it away right now. So let's try that, 30 strokes, <clears throat> take a deep inhale, 30 strokes a minute, we're just going to do 30 strokes today, don't worry about the time. Start. I lose track sometimes I go a little over sometimes a little less the way to estimate whether you're doing enough strokes is when you've completely exhausted your belly and your lungs of air so you should feel totally everything is gone out of course you're not going to totally evacuate all the air out because you're also inhaling so it's a forceful inhale and exhale but you will feel yourself slowing that's like a train engine leaving the station I don't know if any of you are from my age, the 14th century, but we used to have what we call the coal engines. So the train leaves the station and it starts chugging. And then it picks up pace. So it keeps going faster. We're only going to do this one time. The one time that we did, and I hope you get to practice it over and over, whenever you're feeling down, you practice this technique, you feel energized. It's also a little bit of a heady feeling. In fact, the next one, which is called Kapal Bhati, is even more of a heady feeling. Kapal is head or skull. Bhati is shining, shining skull. And you feel, you should feel, ideally, if you're doing it right and you're doing it safely, you should feel a kind of a radiation from the inside. And Kapal Bhati is simply forceful exhale. Remember, inhale happens. So you're got, just going to, Forcefully exhale, almost like you're, you're blowing your nose, but with nothing coming out, hopefully. So we're going to do that. <coughs> Again, we're going to keep track, 30 strokes. And it is highly energizing, but it can also be a little heady. So watch out. So when you do a lot of Kapalbhati and you start walking around on the street, you might feel a little woozy, you might feel a little dizzy. So make sure you're seated somewhere. Be safe. <coughs> And Kapalbhati is amazingly effective for anyone with arthritis, I've heard. I'm not going to make medical claims, but just so you know, just send this breath into your joints so you feel it. So you want to actually send your breath to areas of your body that actually feel a little weak today, especially the joints, weight-bearing joints. I like to send it to my knees. <clears throat> when you're ready, take a deep inhale. Begin, 30 strokes.
pick up pace. Faster. Slow down. That is just one round. We're going to spare you the second and third and fourth and fifth rounds, but at home, if you have the luxury of time and energy, I encourage you to practice Kapalbhati as often as you can because it really just clears all your sinuses for a start. It's really good. You just send mentally send your energy to your joints and you will feel energized. If you want to do this standing up, you want to sit in a chair, that's fine too. You want to lock yourself in a knee bend position or you could also sit cross-legged. For me, cross-legged is not as effective as I'd like it to be, but you could also do that. But I'm actually coming out of the knee position right now because I'm going to take you through Sima Asan or Lion. Akram is going to stay where he is. <clears throat> I'm going to come on my hands and knees only because it's easy for me to stick my tongue out. But with Akram, I'm going to recommend that you hold the sides of your chairs. This time you're not going to place your hands on, the, on your knees. I'm going to place my palms directly below my shoulders like the cat, but this time Sima is lion. Sima Asan is lion position. And you may or may not be able to see, but my toes are curled and it just makes me feel more comfortable. I'm going to take a deep inhale all the way from my belly and I'm going to demonstrate once and you can join in later. And if you feel for privacy reasons you want to close your eyes, that's perfectly all right. I'm going to keep my eyes open the first time. Inhale. Stick your tongue out. Loud exhale. <coughs> so as you exhale, your belly goes all the way in. So we're going to do that two more times. <coughs> like a lion. Very fierce lion. This time I'm going to close my eyes. This lion is blind. Inhale. <coughs> if you've ever done this at home and you want privacy, go do it in the bathroom. Look at your reflection. You're not going to scare yourself. Stick your tongue out. Let all the air out. Or go hug a tree and stick your tongue out. Let all that air come out with the sound. You're going to feel really energized and totally elevated. You're going to feel, if you're depressed, you're unhappy, you're angry about something, just let all that out. Let it go. This is a great way to let it go if you're not conscious of yourself. And in yoga, we believe we really cannot go far if you get too self-conscious. So don't worry. I'm not suggesting you sit on the subway train and go, ah, in someone's face <laughs> just because they're frustrating you. But practice it at home. And if you really want to do it in someone's face, they're really annoying you, go ahead, go for it. And see what their reaction is. And then, you know, if someone hauls you up, or calls you out on it, just say, hey, I'm practicing my breathing. Simasan. Try it. I love it. It's my favorite. I do it when I'm in a posture that becomes difficult, especially the downward dog. Mm -hmm. It's a great way when you're down, upside down, go, ah, it feels really wonderful. Now, that done, again, Akram, this time you want to bring, bring your knees out, place your hands on the chair in the middle. We're going to go through... Swana Asan. Swana is dog, if you remember from one of the previous segments. Now I'm going to just come bring my knees out a little bit. I'm going to bring my hands down, but I'm not going to lift my butt like I did in the Simhasan. Like a dog, and I'm going to turn my elbows in. The front of my elbows are coming out. Now the Simhasan is one loud exhale with your tongue sticking out. The lion. Lion is fierce, so it makes a really loud sound. Dogs and pant. So here's what we're going to do. Again, you may want to stick your tongue out a little bit, not too much. <laughs> now, we are going to follow the 30-stroke rule. You're going to breathe from the belly and take a full inhale. And when you're panting, it's almost like you're releasing all the air out. So it's really an exhale technique. Count to about 30. We're going to use 30 strokes. So let's do that. We've got about four minutes, so we're doing well. Take a deep inhale. We did this, I practiced this breathing technique with my students and especially the lion one in India. When I was in India, every year I go to India for about three, four months to take care of my mom. And I was practicing with the students and because it's a big group, about 20, 30 people, when we did it, 
especially the lion one, there were a couple of stray dogs at the gate and they were breathing with us. They started barking and they were breathing and ooh, you could hear all the dogs coming there. So, you know, it must be, it must be working, right? It's a dog uh, breath for a reason. Now, we already practiced the ujjayi. Now, the treat that I promised, we have a couple of minutes. So in this one, I'm actually going to sit cross-legged because I really love this particular breathing technique. Believe it or not, we don't really realize it till you go into a yoga classroom, the sound of Om. For this one, I sit cross-legged, thumb and index are touching, and Akram's got it right. And this one, I'm going to be very conscious. I'm going to open my fingers out. Now, because my legs are longer than my torso, my torso in this position, my arms are not going to go really straight, or at least my palms, the back of my palms are not going to sit on my knee if my arms are straight. So I'm going to bend my elbows a little bit and keep my fingers open. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a deep inhale. Now, remember, I'm going to just demonstrate one time, but I won't make the sound of OM. I want you to do that with me because we're going to close this segment with the sound of OM. You're going to inhale, fill from the belly all the way into the chest and the sound, you're going to fill, push all that air in into your skull region as well. So when you exhale, you're going to release from the belly, from the lungs, from the skull. You're going to release every part till totally the whole, all the air has gone out. So let's try that together. And remember, the OM is actually a trisyllabic sound, ah. Ooh, mm. you recall that from a previous episode, Akram. I can see you already repeating that, so that's good. Akram is experienced in chanting Om, so I'm going to rely on your voice. Male voices are deeper, so it actually carries longer. Female voices, as long as we keep it soft, we can try and go a little further as well. So this is beautiful, perfect timing. I think we have about a minute, which is really great. Let's try that together. And actually, you know what, while you do that, Let's do it two times. I like to do it more than once. So place your right hand on your belly, left hand on your chest, and then we'll move up to the left. So let's practice once together since we have a whole minute. Inhale. Uh... What you want to experience is the ah coming from the belly, the oo coming from the heart region, and the mm <coughs> reverberating in the skull. So since we have, since our timing is pretty good today, let's do this. Let's do a full three ohms if we can do it, but let's do at least one, one full round. Deep inhale. Um. Beautiful timing. I can see the closing sound as well. Let's do that one more time. Um. Like to call that the cascading om. As we continue to do the om, the mouth got smaller and smaller instead of ah, ooh, mm, it just comes naturally. Om, om. And I think we synchronize well with the closing ohms as well, so that was great. Akram, now it's your turn. How do you feel? I feel great. Feel good, right? Yeah. See, who knows? Who, who would have thought just, you know, well, just have, just breathing can give us a high. Honestly. When I came in here today, I had a pulled muscle in my back, so I didn't know I could do these exercises. Right, you did great. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to try, right? I, I don't know when the when the pain went away. I'm not sure if it was the breathing or if it was the stretching. The breathing I'm definitely helped sure. yeah, uh, put things great. in perspective. By the way, before I forget, thank you, Lizette, Antonio, and Ryan. Thank you so much, my team of directors and our facilitator. Really appreciate your help. You guys really hung in there. Thank you. Really love you guys thank you so you you feel good